We're not checking. We're professionals. It's a lot cooler than anticipated. <laughs> you know, cool boob. <laughs> <sighs> yep, it was lousy. Yep. That's, uh, welcome back to the lousy show. I'm Joe. I'm Sam. What's up? <laughs> I, I am. I uh, I am not as high energy today because my allergies are kicking my ass. Yeah, I think we got that like teeny tiny little bit of rain, and all the pollen was like. Have, yeah! have you seen the roads, <laughs> bro? You're, so your roads not is a lot worse than everywhere else. I feel like I don't know yeah. what it is, but like I turn onto your road and it's like yellowish brown on the ground. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Happened? Like for for the yeah. record, for the record, we have actual like blacktop. Like we yeah. don't have like that that grayish you mm-hmm. know road that you see put down. Like we have it's actual blacktop. Yeah, black. it's that color. Yeah. Yes, yeah, and. I didn't see it. Like, I, well, of course, I went and got his Dutch Bros before yep. we started. Thank you. And uh, By the way. anytime, um, and I like I walk outside and I just like my driveway is is just white concrete. Yeah, like no, that's normal for Texas. Yeah, and I was like, okay, cool. Hop in my car. I realize my car needs a bath because my car is black. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, I'll give it a bath later today or whatever. Like, I take it by the car wash. Yeah, I get onto the road and I went. <laughs> It ain't black. What? No. And it's just, it's it's horrendous. My head has felt like I have a balloon filled with water. Yeah, just sloshing around. I can't breathe. Mm-hmm. Like there's something different to Texas cedar that, like, because of course we had bad allergies in Virginia. Yes. Oh, hello. VPN's making its uh, appearance again. It's like VPN's I want to be like, in the show. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. Like we had some. Hellacious pollen in Virginia, but nothing could have prepared me for moving here and just the pollen assassination of my sinuses yeah. that I just, I can't deal yep. with it. Although now like that I've been here almost 10 years, I'm pretty well used to it for the most part. So I'm, I'm fine right now. And but, I'm over here chewing on Allegra like it's fucking Skittles. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> That's like my daily routine. I'll wake up in the morning and I'm like, I'll go to sleep and I'm like, you know, you're going to wake up in pain, brother. Like, yep. good luck. And then I'll wake up and I'm like, uh, what, uh. what kind of helps you get out of that loop is taking Claritin once a day or, or the generic, either one. That's what I take Allegra for. Yeah. yeah. Same concept. But I feel like, I don't know like what it is about Claritin that helped me a lot. Where are you getting the high grade stuff? Cause Claritin doesn't do that for me. I mean, I, I just get normal. I think it's Claritin D. Maybe shout uh, out sponsor us. I guess nuts. <laughs> yeah. like, hey, I, I've yeah. I've taken both. I've taken Claritin. Uh-huh. I've taken Allegra, and Allegra works way better for me. Like gotcha. I feel, I feel actual relief through the day. Whereas yeah. Claritin, it was like an instant relief, and then it was like gone. Claritin is more not an instant relief for me. It's more like building up over time. Yeah. Uh, which I, I don't know if that's actually how it's supposed to happen. That's what I've been told, but. Yeah. Um, it, that's how it kind of helped for me. And so like, you know, usually I started taking it like a couple weeks before the season started yep. to just kind of prepare <laughs> and then I'm good. But now I, I don't take anything and, yeah. and it's good. So, uh, there's, there's some, uh, that actually kind of generates exactly what we're talking about today. There's some advice for you. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, if you're going to come to Texas, be prepared for cedar. Yeah. Like that's, I, I, I remember the first, like first couple weeks I was here, I was like, my nose was adjusting, like my face, every my sizes were adjusting, and yep. my neighbor was like, "You ain't never heard of Texas cedar, have you?" And I was like, "Uh, no, yeah. I haven't." Nope. And he he showed me a picture of where like actual Texas cedar trees will shake. Yeah, and oh, I'm like, "That's yeah. terrifying. Mm-hmm. Like that's the happening is what that is." <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I am not about that. M Night Shyamalan was right. Yeah, and, uh, the trees it, are attacking us. It's just only in Texas. Yeah, yep. yeah. <laughs> and then I mean, well, it, see. Either M. Night Shyamalan is going to be right or the creators of The Last of Us are going to be right. Actually, all right. So, of course, now that we're recording, I thought of the idea. That's the type of lousy movies that we need to do. Like, we just need to find, like, the culmination of the worst movies that have come out over the last, like, couple decades. Yes. And and just talk about So, them. basically, we're going to yeah. do an M. Night Shyamalan marathon. Basically. <laughs> yeah. uh, for everybody yeah. out there wondering. Um, no, but, like, when I what saw that, dude, I, <laughs> I just, it, it, it baffled me. Yeah. And, <clears throat> like even back home in Virginia when I lived there, I lived there for 30 years and mm. my allergies would like, I, I guess I had adjusted to them so much that it, like I could easily just like, you know, pop uh, Allegra or Claritin for a couple of days yeah, and it'd be fine. But here, like, like I said, Allegra is the only thing that helps me here. Mm. And it's, and, and I'm lucky to make it 24 hours. Like yeah. I guarantee tonight when I go stream, I'm going to be like, 
<laughs> like, because it's just it's just pain. It's gotten to a point now where like chat's expecting me to just lay back in my chair and hit myself with eye drops, like yep. because my, everything just gets dried out. It's so bad, dude. Sinus treatment stream. All right, <laughs> you get yeah. one of those uh, the neti pots or whatever nettle pots. Oh, uh, I use that all the time. Yeah, just do that on stream. Just, Ooh, yeah, no. <laughs> I would not subject anybody to that. I uh, I think it'd be funny personally. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe, uh, but what what comes out of there is not going to be pretty. I nope. can tell you that now. Mm-mm. I've had. I remember. I'll tell you. I'll tell you two quick funny stories. I think one of them I've told you before, but I know the viewers have not heard this before. So, uh, quick story one. First time I ever used a neti pot was I was, was working at that cellular store that's red mm-hmm. with the big check mark. Yeah, and. Uh, my boss at the time, uh, James, hilarious dude, hobbit looking motherfucker, uh, comes to the store because he like he called me that morning. He's like, "Hey, I'm in town. Uh, I'm gonna come by your store later." And he heard me like, "Yeah, sure, that's fine." And he's like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, "No." <laughs> and he just he's like, "Okay, I'm coming to your store first. Yeah. So he shows up. He walks in, and I'm sitting in my office, and I'm just like, I'm laid back in my chair, just. God, take me now. Like, I'm here. <laughs> and he's just like, are you okay? I'm like, all of this feels like a 30-pound weight. Yeah. Like, like it, it, I, like I think of those old cartoons where you see someone have a giant head and they're dragging it along, kind of like funny moment. Like, that's how I felt. Yeah. And he was like, dude, go get a neti pot. I'm like, okay. I go to the the, the food line right across the way. For anybody who knows food line, represent. Y'all, y'all the OGs. Represent. <laughs> represent. Hey, no, look, no, they no. got great chicken. Um, <laughs> that's all they got. <laughs> fair. Uh, go get a neti pot. And he was like, okay. I was like, I told him first, I don't know how to use this. He goes, yeah. pour some distilled water in, you know, warm it up a little bit, pour it in, uh, saline, send it. Okay. I hit my nose, that thing, dude. <laughs> it looked like I had a slug removed oh, out of my nose. Like, it, like it, I felt you actually, the weird part. And if for anybody who has never used these before, like I recommend it. <clears throat> you're supposed to let it naturally drain through. Well, my dumbass, I felt it. I got to take my glasses off for this. I felt it working uh, its way in oh. and then stop. Oh, God. And I was like, huh. That's not good. <laughs> and I just went, that's weird. Huh? And that's what I felt. <laughs> and it just you just pressure wash your sinuses bro. basically dude <laughs> and i felt it just <laughs> all the way through but yeah. everything when it started coming out oh my god the sweet relief oh i bet uh, oh like the day of the nose yes yeah, just... but that's that when that slug hit the, t- the the sink in front of me i was like, <laughs> like it, you don't realize what all's up in there it's a lot yeah um this second one very quick has nothing to do with sinuses though it does have to do with being sick um, I was living actually it was right after you moved to Texas mm. and I was in uh, my apartment uh, with our old roommate. Yeah. And uh, I, I was, I was sick as a dog. I usually don't get sick. Like I have a pretty strong immune system. Mm. Um, and I, I, I get hit with something. It was like a, like a 48 hour, 72 hour bug kind of thing. But the first 24 hours was the absolute worst and uh, I remember somebody brought me some NyQuil to help me out, like brought me some medicine to help me. And the next day I was like, I got to go to work because I'm, I'm living on my own. You got to go to work when you're living on your own. Yeah. Like, and so I'm like, I got to go to work. I can't call out. And uh, so I remember waking up the next morning, rolling over in bed, grabbing the bottle of medicine and slamming a lot of it back putting the bottle down on the table and then recognizing that I just chugged NyQuil. Oh, no. <laughs> I then ran to my fridge, grabbed a monster, <laughs> and started to slam that. <laughs> and thus the battle began. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I gave myself Forrest Whitaker eye. <laughs> like, I was just... <laughs> uh, and it was not... It was not a pleasant experience, I will tell you that. I'm just... You, <laughs> If you ever wonder, uh, if you really want to know what war feels like, <laughs> do that. You're basically a veteran at this point. Yeah, <laughs> like, just, you, know, you just go to VA, claim your benefits. Now. That's that's where <laughs> I'm at at this point. I, I I genuinely felt the battle wage inside me of like, and the, when it mixed in my stomach, oh, oh. that was one of the worst pains I've ex- ever experienced because oh, your bet. stomach's like, this is not supposed to be happening right now. <laughs> uppers, downers, uppers, downers. Yeah, uppers, downers. and it's just... The NyQuil started yeah. to work at one point. Now it was like you'd see me be like, 
<laughs> like it was not a not a pleasant experience. I'm just imagining like the armies of men versus Mordor <laughs> just <laughs> clashing. <laughs> yes. Oh man. Well, good story. We yes, should do that uh, again. We should just do that and just see what happens. I feel like we're gonna somehow end up like Rhett and Link over here GMM it up. Like, what happens when you drink ten Red Bulls at one time? Like. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't want to ever do that to my body again. If I'm being real, with you. it was, yeah. and it, it like the thing. I remember the come down too, if that's what you want to call it, <laughs> was like the rebalancing. I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like bringing it back to center was like by the end of that day. I guess what I had ingested helped my body stay in a state of overdrive mm. for so long that I didn't feel sick anymore. Nice. I, 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 mind you, the night prior was violence. Yeah. Like I, I'm not going to you know, subject any of the listeners to what took place. Just understand the word violence is all you need. Yeah. So me anticipating that for the rest of the next day, knowing I don't feel better. And then by the end of the day going like, oh my God, what did I do? <laughs> like, I feel great now. I like, I was probably at 80%, but like I felt my body just yeah back into level. And I'm like. Maybe that's the real secret. You just got to go through 24 hours of hell, and then you're good. That's it. Yep. And that that gives you a thick back and an upset stomach. Also, IBS, possibly. I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, Watch but, out, COVID. Right? But uh, if you haven't guessed yet, uh, today's topic is about uh, advice. Yes, but mm. uh, my advice from that is two things. One, if you're feeling like you have allergies, find some good meds because don't be like me. I usually tackle this shit without it. Allegra's a great choice. Claritin's a great choice for him to that, whatever you need yep. to do. Or see your doctor. Number two, don't mix monster and not equal. Terrible idea. But we're going to get into advice that we see here because it might be random advice. We're not going to be picky, choosy of uh, like the topics we're having today. Uh, we, we're we just going to go into Reddit mm. because we found that y'all enjoy when we deep dive Reddit for some reason. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Reddit's just a classic. You know, it's yes. literally the internet all culminated into one website. I would say all the internet. That's a very special breed in there. Uh, Well, I mean, you have like the innocent side of Reddit, and then you have like the very degenerate side of Reddit. Let's <laughs> let's make sure we understand the clarity yeah. here. Here's the innocent side of Reddit. Yeah. Here's yeah. The, <laughs> the degenerate, degenerate yeah. side of Reddit. Honestly, though. Yep. So it's going to be random advice. Uh, if any of this pertains to something you may in, uh, you know need, awesome. Uh, and remember to submit any – here's the best part. In our Discord, we have a section that's all forum-based. Mm. If you ever want to submit something to us for advice, drop it in there. Oh, 100%. Yeah. We will read it mm. live and go ahead and discuss it. So send it to there. The Discord link is down in the description. And while you're there, subscribe or follow us and hit the like button. Or else. And then comment telling us that you – Ate a cheese sandwich today. <clears throat> Anyways, let's jump in. Just ruling out the entire lactose intolerant community. How dare you? You know what? Let's hashtag cancel Joey Tenders. Okay. Yeah, fuck them. Uh, anyways, <laughs> so no, uh, let's be real here. Lactose intolerance, it's fake. It's y'all, y'all still yeah. eat cheese every single fucking day. You, you just poop your brains out. Do, like, do you watch uh, um, like YMH? Stuff like Tom all the time, like, all the so, time. You know, um, oh, the, one of the like the producers there, he does a whole section of like uh, things that are cap. Yeah, that should be one of them. Yes, yeah, I'm gonna write in. I, I I I I will say this, and I'm probably gonna piss a lot of people off, and I really don't care if I do. Lactose intolerance, mm. very real. Yeah, lactose intolerant people who ch- who actually actively practice it, bullshit. <laughs> Here's why: y'all enjoy milk with your cereal. Y'all enjoy cheese. Yep. Y'all enjoy all this other dairy non you know, dairy products bullshit. And y'all just deal with the repercussions when y'all go shit your brains out in an yeah. hour. I that that's I have never met somebody, and I'm not saying they don't exist, mm. but I've never met somebody who is lactose intolerant to the point which they would be like, I would literally explode if I ate if I look at cheese. Yeah, you're, like you're intolerant, which just means like your body disagrees with it. Like if I ever got to that point, I would happily shit myself for absolutely. a fucking glass of milk. You know? <laughs> absolutely. I will eat a brick of cheddar yep. just to embrace the privacy and free time of doom scrolling TikTok for an hour yep. while my bowels erupt. Like there's 
perks. There are perks. There's yep. perks. You <laughs> have a get out of jail free card is what you have. <laughs> That's what you got. So yep. lactose intolerant people at me. I don't care. Huh. Uh, anyways, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's start here. So Sam, you yep. already pulled one up. Well, I just pulled up the Reddit thread, and this is the very first one. Well, then yep. let's read it. Yep, let's, let's see. Let's it. see what we got because the the title is very interesting as it is. Yep. Um, I I will happily let you take the wheels sure. on this one. So we're just on r slash advice, and uh, the very first one posted five hours ago by Crazy Cat Lady eleven ninety six. The girl downstairs bangs on the ceiling if I take a single step in my office, room above her bedroom, before 10 a.m. Oh, yikes. These apartments were built in 1950, and the first five feet-ish into the room creak when stepped on. I try to step over this area as best as possible, but I'm five foot three, and my legs are short, so this is difficult. Yeah, you can't really just be, you know, running over Yeah, that. exactly. <laughs> uh, I try to avoid uh, using this room in the morning as much as possible, but also I don't think I should have to have part of my apartment as off-limits. I have asked her to text me if she feels I'm being loud, but she just bangs on the ceiling if I take a single step into the room. Gives me super bad, bad anxiety because I don't want to be a bad upstairs neighbor, but it's not like I'm not being loud on purpose. I'm literally tiptoeing and the floor still creaks. How do I approach this? I am a super anxious. Uh, I am super anxious and don't want to have issues with my downstairs neighbor. <clears throat> Man, I don't miss apartments. <laughs> I will tell you that same. straight out the gate because, yeah, that's – that was kind of the same thing. That, well, it was the reverse, but we weren't banging on the ceiling, but we there we were on the ground floor, and the people above us had a kid, so it was always stomping. And so, like, and we don't really care, you know. It wasn't really bothering us to the point of that, but it would sometimes happen at like three a.m., you know. Oh and hell, we no. and we're like, oh, this kid needs to like, <clears throat> stop walking or or grow up really quick. But, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a difficult one. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, so if it's built in the fifties, I'm thinking it's probably either like a hardwood or it's very like, it's very likely hardwood, uh, hollowed out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause a lot of those old buildings, especially like from where, so where we grew up, Mm -hmm. uh, there's a downtown area that you, it's, it's all classic buildings Yep. built around this time. If you, and I've gotten a chance to go exploring a lot of them, especially now they've been redone. Yeah. And what you find is those floors have no insulation in between them. Yeah. What it is is it's it's essentially like ceiling, like boards, and yeah. then, you know, connect like cross boards to make sure that the floor stays where it's supposed to be. Yeah. And typically your flooring is going to have like some sort of plywood over it and then you know, floor on top of that, whether it's linoleum, hardwood, whatever it may be, right? In this case, it sounds like it's just an old hardwood floor yeah. with a simple foundation underneath it and then those cross beams and then ceiling. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you'll have HVAC running through there. If it's an older place, very likely that I'm guessing they probably don't have HVAC running through. They probably have uh, some sort of like window units or something. So it's not going to insulate the floor that much. It's it's essentially like walking on a table like this, just... yeah. But I think it's not even – it's more about the squeaking that they're having an issue with. Correct. So, like, I think – I mean, it might not hurt to just to call maintenance and see if there's just, like, some loose boards there that they can just screw down or put some, yeah. like, liquid nails on to get it to where it's not squeaking as much. Because um, it's – I mean, you know, it's if she's saying, I'm literally tiptoeing and the floor still creaks, then, yeah, there's probably just some loose shit there. Because it's an ancient building. Well, I also want to you know. say on the side uh, of the neighbor here, like banging on the ceiling is not going to do anything to piss people off. No, like if they were being like actually shitty, you know, and like you know, three a.m. having like super loud music and yeah. you know shit like that, then sure, bang on the ceiling if you yeah, want to. Exactly. But if somebody's just walking, that's not going to help anything. It's just going to cause a, a weird situation like this. <clears throat> yeah, and then and I'll tell you, this is, uh, I guess it's me being the extrovert that I am, but, like, I try and get to know the people around me. Yeah. That way it's not a situation like this. Because if I'm being loud, I would rather someone text me telling me I'm being loud yeah. so I can apologize and make sure I don't do that again. Well, she even did that. She said, I've asked her to text me if she feels I'm being too loud, but she just bangs on the ceiling instead. That's so. my point. It sounds yeah. like her neighbor just doesn't want to get to know anybody and yeah. doesn't want that relationship. So her neighbor... Isn't it is what it sounds like inherently being just a bitch? Yeah, like and, and point blank period. Like that's that's kind of the situation here. The advice I would give this individual, I agree with you, calling maintenance and like be like, look, <clears throat> I don't know, you know what we can do to fix this, but 
Yeah. These it's, boards are creaking. We need to get something down. Clearly making a, a situation between the two of us. Yeah. And somebody comment, like I see a comment, put down a rug, but I don't think that's going to help anything if it's squeaking. <clears throat> well, know? it depends. Is So if it's a more of like a shag style rug, I'm pretty sure, uh, I, like the fabric mm. is long enough and cushioned enough. Where it, it's going to absorb the steps a bit more. Well, because it's not that; it's just the weight transfer. Correct. That's what so. I say. Like, I don't, I don't know if that holding mm -hmm. enough is going to, because a rug's still going to take the surface area, right? Yeah. It's going to hold to a surface area more than you stepping directly on a spot. And so, if that helps, cool. But I don't think that's going to be like no, because I mean, a rug's not going to transfer your weight <clears throat> across the entire rug. True. You know, so like it's, you know, I, I don't oh, think a rug's going to really help. the whole house is carpet. Oh. Yeah, no, so that's not going to help. <laughs> then probably, oh, I it's, bet you I know a, what they it's did. It's a loose-ass board. That's yeah, all I know it, exactly you know. what they did. They they had, they had did not in any way mm. properly floor that. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, well, because, yeah, most apartments want to just do it cheaply. Yeah, dude, that fucking yeah. sucks. I hate I was just having a conversation about this. I was literally just having a conversation about when people fuck up good hardwood flooring with just linoleum or carpet. Like, why? Yeah. Why? Like, there's no purpose behind that. Yeah, I mean, I, carpet can be nice, but I, to me, it just it gets really dirty really fast. Yep. Uh, you have to do way too much maintenance to it to make it sustainable. So, like, just yeah, rip it up, put some honestly uh, some uh, like laminate flooring down or something. Yeah. Just you know, make it look nice but functional. <clears throat> um, Let's see. Some people yeah. just aren't built to live around others. You said yeah. in the comment, you have carpet. It is what it is. Just ignore it. She can take it up with the landlord, but you're not doing anything abnormal, which is not your problem. That's fair. That is yeah. also very fair. Like it is. I get okay. So I look at this from this perspective here, and and and, and I I would I treat this how I would treat this. I would want to get to know my neighbor. If efforts fail, there's nothing else you can do on that front. Yeah, you've tried. Uh, if the landlord gets involved. Realistically, you have the opportunity to contact your landlord and be like, hey, look, she's banging on the floor, uh, causing disruption, all because I'm simply walking through my apartment. Yeah. What can we do? You know? Mm -hmm. um, but also at the same point, like you said at the beginning of this, this is... You are so gaslit that you're online asking strangers if it's okay for you to walk in your own apartment. I mean, there, there's an element of truth to that, you know, for sure. <laughs> yeah, like, but yeah, I think short answer is yeah, either just deal with it, but as an anxious <clears throat> person, that can be hard. And then, but yeah, definitely just talk to maintenance. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, uh, I would say conclusion. Talk to like call your landlord, get maintenance in there if they, if they can. Otherwise, who gives a shit? Let's see what we have next. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let's go to this one. Yeah, I'll read this. Okay. I'll read this. Let's go. Man, your 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 roots are showing. <laughs> um, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm pregnant and my boyfriend won't talk to me. Okay. All right. Let's uh let's wait, wait how are my roots showing? What do you mean by that? You know the high school we went to. <laughs> Oh well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I mean. That's a and of course, statement. and then and then you want to know about it, so of course it's the gossip part, right? Oh so, uh, well, that yeah, yeah, that's that's the yeah. old me. That's definitely the old me yeah, showing. No, it's just not just you. I'm talking like just our area in general. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a, I I say that to say like it, we were having a conversation the other night, and you had brought up like yeah, he used to be that way, but no, not anymore. <laughs> he learned. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, these are definitely my roots showing of me going like, ooh, uh, I'm pregnant. My boyfriend won't talk to me. I. 16F, just found out I was pregnant about an hour ago. Okay, so this was posted yesterday. Holy shit. Uh, well, congratulations. Hopefully. I, I, I don't know about congratulations at 16. Hopefully. That's not a congratulations, oh, usually. Oh, like, oh. My boyfriend, 17 male, and I have been questioning our relationship the last week or so. Well, that's not good. Nope. Uh, we've been together for over three years. I called him and told him, and he told me that he doesn't care what I do as long as I don't have it. Oh. He told me to set up an appointment and get the pill. I told him I'm scared to do that because I, of course, haven't had any ultrasounds or anything like that, so I have no idea how long it's been. I've been on birth control, so I haven't had my period since I started it in April of 2022. I had no idea, so I don't know how long it has been. I told him I was scared, and he just says, why? Yeah, 
I asked if he still loved me, and he said he thinks so. I don't know what to do. <clears throat> so I'm going to help us both here. Okay. I'm going to speak. I, I, I want us to not speak on behalf of her. Okay. I want us to speak on behalf of him. That's doing us a favor? Here's why. I don't know if that is. I, and I'm going yeah. to explain the justification behind that. Okay. I don't think you and I are going to ever understand what it's like to be in her shoes. No. No. We are going to understand what it's like to be in his. Not in the shittiness, yeah. but we understand what that opposite side looks like as a guy. <clears throat> so, okay. I, I would have maybe framed it as like, let's look at it from a rational guy's perspective. That's fair. You know? Well, that's what, that's what <laughs> yeah. I mean. Like, I don't mean yeah. like we, you know, we, we were out there just, I'm you know, not thinking for Kyle here. Okay. No, yeah, <laughs> like, no. yeah. I don't have the ability to speak on behalf of her at all. No. Um, I, I, I have, I will preach this until the day I turn blue in the face, man, that this situation, you, you like, you need to be better about protecting yourself. Like it's too late at this point. Yeah. Like so you're, you're talking hindsight at this point. Correct. Yeah. Hindsight's 2020. <laughs> <clears throat> I think everybody knows, like, just be careful. Yeah. In this situation, um, he, I mean, I, here's my thought, and and this is, <laughs> I am trying my hardest to tiptoe around this because there's things I could say that's on my brain that I'm like, am I ready for the flurry of comments? <sighs> He needs to own up and recognize mm-hmm. that he did something. Yes. However, and this is where this is going to become a bit of a conscious debate, I believe we might have. I don't know how you feel about this. I do not believe, okay, that he should leave her alone. You made the conscious decision Mm -hmm. to have sex. You made the conscious decision to not pull out. Now, I also want to recognize this is a very, very much in its infancy of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. She just found out that she might be pregnant. Yeah. Or in her case, she she found out she is. So I'm assuming she took a pee stick yeah. and boom, double lines. We haven't gone to an OB yet. We haven't gone to a baby doc yet. We haven't looked at anything yet. We haven't gone. I, I as, as a parent, I know what this whole process looks like. Yeah. We ain't done none of that yet. Mm. They haven't gone and taken the magic wand and pff, right inside of you to get a n- nice ultrasound right at your cervix. Like w- none of that's been done yet. Mm. Okay. So if we know that. This is very much in its infancy, right? I think he needs to own up to the recognizing, like, okay, I made that decision. Yeah. You know? Because it's unfair for us as guys to do what do that and then turn around and go, you're dealing with it by yourself. Yeah. If you knew you two were on the rocks, you should be careful regardless. Hindsight's 2020, but yeah. still, like, you should have been careful. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I want to hear what you think. Cause I, that's, that's where I stand. I think that he needs to recognize that he made that conscious decision. Yeah. And now it's time to grow up and put our big boy pants on. Yeah. I mean, you should always, you know, deal with the consequences of your actions, but then also at the same time, cause this is definitely a two halves responsibility thing, yep. but support the other half, whether yep. or not you stay together or not. <clears throat> Y'all fucked up together. Yeah. Deal with it together. And yeah. then if you do go through with it and keep the baby, co parent that motherfucker. You yeah. Know? And and that's the main thing there. But at the same time, respect her wishes too. Well, yeah, and this so. is so this is where and, and I don't wanna I don't wanna make any justifications or any judgment calls here, but this is where something very interesting I read recently came up. I read it it was from I can't remember the podcast, but I remember I was reading the transcript of it, like comments that were made it within the conversation. And the girl 
who was on there. They got on the topic of of what it looks like in the event of uh, like uh, my body, my choice, right? Yeah. And uh, I remember the host asked, like, so what are your thoughts on this? And she said that it's my body, my choice. I don't give a shit what he thinks, mm -hmm. right? And ladies, I want to hear the comments. Like, by all means, I don't want to make any again. I don't want to make any justifications. I know I'm not speaking for you on behalf of this either. This is more of a question I really have lingering in my head. You may have the same one, but ladies, leave in the comments an answer to this question. Mm. In this event, what if the man said the same thing? What? It's it's my choice to walk away. If it's your choice to keep it, like it's my choice, right? Hey, everyone. Thank you for watching this so far. We greatly appreciate you hanging out with us. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're watching on YouTube or listening on any listening sites. Make sure to go follow us on there as well. And also, if you're watching the video, drop us a like and share it to your friends who might want some lousy advice as well. If you have any, any at all lousy advice that you want from us or any lousy ideas that you'd like us to cover, drop it in the actual comments down below or send it to us at thelousypodcast at gmail.com. You can also email us there anytime with any ideas you have. Back to the show. Women, mm -hmm. women typically, and I, and I agree with a lot of women. Yeah. I agree because a lot of times it's, it's, it, especially an unplanned pregnancy, it's something you just didn't expect. Yeah. You know, you don't know how to process that or navigate it. Thankfully, there's a lot of people out there who have smart partners. They work together. That's great. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I'm looking at it from the standpoint, from that, that comment that was made of like, well, it's my body, my choice. I'm going to keep this baby, whether you like it or not. Well, what if the guy had, goes and says the same choice of, okay, well, you can keep it, but I'm not going to be a part of your life, and I'm not going to help you with that baby at all. I have the right to walk away. That's my question, is do the guys have that same right in return? That because because realistically, you know, mm -hmm. I agree with you 100%. I do not disagree without a doubt that you should be able to co-parent. Yeah. Even if you don't plan on staying together, I know a bunch of guys and gals who do that, where mm -hmm. they, they, they just could, they are not – compatible yeah but they make it work for their kid mm. not together they co-parent yeah you know dad over here doing his thing probably gonna end up with another woman probably gonna be stepmom i'm sure at some point same thing with mom probably gonna find a stepdad you know that kind of situation there mm. right but at the end of the day it still comes down to mom and dad taking care of co-parenting that one child my question again i, I want to make sure it's very clear and adamant not something that I'm saying is a definitive. I don't believe that you know this is this is part of this uh, narrative here. I'm just curious as to the thoughts of if women say it's my body, my choice. Mm -hmm. Do men get the same right in saying it is your body, your choice? It's also my choice to walk away. Now, I also want to say this in conclusion of this, and then hear your concluding thoughts as well. Mm -hmm. Men, uh recognize very importantly here that that's a very shitty thing to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like if you are going to go and put your penis in someone mm -hmm. and, you know, give them a bit of the baby batter and then suddenly 10 months later, wah, yeah, you should be owning up. Yep. Just my opinion. That, but that's my concluding thoughts. Yeah. yeah. Own up to your shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I think in this case to, to conclude to this, this situation, uh, honey, it sounds like he's not going to be a part of the situation. Navigate it as calmly and coolly as you can. Yeah, it's not fun being pregnant that early. It's not from either perspective. Uh, you and I remember plenty of people who got pregnant in in high school. Like it was almost like a trend at our high school, which is I hate to say, but it's true. There's a lot. But yeah. the thing is, like all you can do is take it one step at a time. Childbirth is a beautiful process. The entire pregnancy is a beautiful process. I think that you will find you will love that child immensely, uh, no matter what. That is your child. That is your rock. That is your 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 love source, if you will. Even if he's not a part of the picture, I, I would say just be prepared to walk that path by yourself yeah. or with the support system you have around you. So. Damn, that was a that was a very very. You wanted to click on deep it. One. <laughs> Honestly, I like the deep ones. I like the deep ones. It makes you think. I hate the deep ones personally. <laughs> really? Yeah, because that's very controversial. Ah, oh, well, I, I don't. I think that it's all in how you navigate it. I yeah. think it could be controversial. There's, yeah. but everything has controversy. 
everything. Not to be like that, though. <laughs> like you, you, I mean, I've you, you can see people like straight up coming to blows yeah. over who what's better, the Whopper or the Big Mac. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's uh, much light, much more lighthearted controversy than uh, basically keep the baby or not is basic. Oh no, no, I'm would, not. I'm not even debating that. Keep the baby regardless. And that's what I mean. That's the controversy part. Because some people will be like, get the rid of the baby. True. You know? so true. That's why I don't like that kind of stuff. But that's fair. That's it's, fair. It's supposed to be that. a lighthearted, fun podcast. And then you dive into politics. <laughs> what? Is, that's I, not- I know it's not, but you know what I mean? Like, it, it, that's something that very quickly turns into it. I suppose. I could see right now. Supposing that's fact. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. Well, then you choose the next one. You go ahead and find the next one. I'm working on it. Let's see. Uh, I said, I said, why do I hold on? Go up real quick. Okay, I, I found what I want to do. <laughs> why do I read I nineteen male? Don't know if I should date the girl I'm interested in. Twenty female. Why do I immediately think like this is a, a like a dude's like graduating high school right and the, she's a cop? <laughs> like, you ever heard that joke? No. Oh, man, I wish I could find the comedian. I'll have to go look. Uh, I want to say it was Rogan. I want to say it was Rogan who did the, the joke on one of his, like, Netflix bits. But uh, talking about how, like, uh, they sent, like, a 25-year-old woman into a high school and, like, to try and do a drug bust. And it, it's a it's a funny joke, but that's where my brain went. Okay, what are we reading? Gotcha. Uh, I changed my mind. I don't know. Uh I'm sorry. This one or uh, the first one? Yeah, that's kind of thing. Yeah, so, fuck it. Let's let's do this one. Uh, okay, full sin. Yeah, this sounds just, controversial. It, I want you to know this can, sounds controversial. It, it can be, but um, we'll see. Uh, how to tell doctor I lied about everything? <laughs> this is the the danger of going in blind. So, <laughs> uh, how do I tell my doctor, general practitioner, I don't have a therapist? That my first diagnosis of Asperger is completely false because I lied to my psychologist who diagnosed me in the psych ward constantly. I will give him the paper with the diagnosis this week, and I am mentally ill, just not with Asperger's, since I lied about everything to cover myself. By the way, my actual mental illness is way worse than having Asperger's. Not that Asperger's is actually bad, but I guess it would be a relief finally knowing what I have. Um, Short answer to that, yeah, tell the truth for sure. Like, why why are you lying (laughs) to do that? Don't you want to get better <clears throat> now i don't uh, like doctors i i will be the first to admit i don't like any doctor like i refuse to go to the doctor unless i'm like actually like about to die or hurting so bad that i can't stand it anymore yeah. i will deal with it otherwise yeah which i know is not healthy do not follow my advice on this this is actual certified lousy advice however if you do go to the doctor tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth oh absolutely yeah. absolutely so, yeah, don't lie. That's not going to help anything. It's only going to make it worse. No, Doc, those aren't genital warts. I just lo- love rubbing frogs on my wiener. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, you say keep it lighthearted. I'm trying my best. Uh, let's see. I don't uh, – okay. I, I This this is easily summed up in a short answer, period, is this. It's like don't lie. <laughs> like yeah. it, it, your health is so very important, uh, especially your mental health. Don't fucking lie about that. Yeah. Especially what got me was it sounded like they had li- at first they had me in the first half. I'm not gonna lie. At first it sounded like they had lied to get some sort of like leg up or some sort of like help they weren't getting before. But no, it's way worse than that because yeah. in the second half we get BTW. My actual mental illness is way worse than having Asperger's. Then why are you lying? <laughs> like what? What? That yeah, doesn't that doesn't make sense to me. I, but I yeah, I really don't understand why you would do that. Yeah, like it's I, 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 I again I can understand not liking doctors. They're all crooks in my opinion. But that I, no, I I will I will fight you on that. I would fight you on that. I know some good genuine there doctors. Are. All right, I should say the vast majority are huge crooks. So that's where I'm leaving it. <sighs> if you hadn't have said that. Yeah. I, I agree. I will conclude my statement by saying this. Mm. I don't think it's the doctors. 
I don't think it's all doctors. I think there's a, a large majority of doctors who are crooks. Mm. I also think it's the hospitals who are way worse. Oh, don't get me started on the system. <laughs> yeah. You know, like the the whole healthcare industry as a Please whole. Please do. No, uh, no. This will be a twenty hour long episode, and it'll be rant me ranting the entire time. <laughs> Comment down below if you want it's that episode. It's not happening. I'll tell you that right now. In fact, I'll edit this entire part out. <laughs> um, but yeah, just don't fucking lie to your doctor. Tell him what's actually happening. Yeah. 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 You want to uh, do one more? Yeah, let's do one more. Yeah. I'll, I'll pick it and I'll keep it light. Yeah. <laughs> For the record, I, mean, I do want to say yeah. this. I very much, I, 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 I do want to say a concluding thought. I realized I didn't say this until after we started moving along. Mm. In that particular situation, it sounds like she wants to keep the baby. That's why I say keep the baby. I also recognize that being pro-choice hmm. is a very strong thing because not every person has the opportunity to have a long, sustainable pregnancy. Yeah. Keyword, sustainable, hmm. uh, whether it's be for health purposes or whatever. I will always be pro-choice. Uh, not because I believe in killing babies, but, but because I believe that sometimes medical emergencies do happen and you have to have the ability to pull that metaphorical trigger, unfortunately, and yeah. that's just the realness of it. Okay. So just for anybody out there wondering before we get fucking pillaged. Um, now we're definitely going to get pillaged. <laughs> I mean, well, you know what? Yeah. Full send out. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Uh, what's a podcast without some honesty? Uh, keep going. Let's find one more. Let's find a good one. <sighs> no, no, I already see that one's gonna piss you off. Nope. Oh yeah, no. Hmm. Um, let's see. Hold up. I kind of want to do this quick one here. Go up. What should I do for my twenty first birthday? Oh hell yeah. I work at a pizza place. Oh, That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> this is very reminiscent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what should I do for my twenty first birthday? I work at a pizza place. You know what we should do. I just thought about this. Hmm. We should make this an actual thing we do from time to time, going and giving advice, right? We should make an account for the last show and comment. I think it'd be cool. Just be funny, be like, like five words, like, fuck it, we ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, what should I do for my 21st birthday? I work at a pizza place that has a bar attached to it. My boss said she would give me three free drinks. I know a few people in the bar, but I'm getting kind of nervous thinking about drinking there. Okay. Now, I want to read some of the comments because I see that OP actually did respond to some of these. Any chance you could get some friends there with you to make you feel more comfortable? The one friend I do have is going to be working on my birthday. Okay. Go out with friends. I don't have... Oh, yeah. Oh, to be honest, you should go for it anyway. You might have fun to even make some new friends. It's a small bar, so I, pro I can probably guess... Already guess who will be there. I'm just nervous to go. Oh, well, what if I can't hang? Uh, okay. So there's a balance. So uh, yeah, and and nobody ever gets it right on their 21st birthday. I sure as fuck didn't. But <laughs> um, and neither did you. Um, Should we talk about those? Yeah, let's talk about our 21st birthday. <coughs> there's some interesting ones. I mean, you're. I'll you, let you start. All right, fine. So, uh, Mr. Trackstar. Yeah, uh, bro. I apparently when I get really drunk, want to race people. Um, yep. So not to mention hit on people that have boyfriends. But you know that's <laughs> that's a. Oh no, thing. we're yeah. we're not gonna we're not gonna skip past that because yeah. I know you're gonna want to just give the juicy details uh, of mine out there too. So, so I mean, so yeah, short story. We oh, it's not short, but uh, we went to for my 21st birthday to visit a friend up in Indiana, mm -hmm. and uh, ten hour drive, ten hour drive, and it was a fun drive. We get there, <laughs> going up was fun. Yeah, going up, going back. We hit a snowstorm, so that was three. Of yeah. Anyway, uh, excuse me. Um, but yeah, so we went to a bar, started drinking, <clears throat> and then the bartender, who was very cute, um, mm -hmm. was she was she was very cute. Um, I thought giving me free drinks. <laughs> Apparently, I was already in pretty deep at this point, so not not free. Um, and so I thought she just really liked me because I was drunk and. Uh, now I don't actually remember any of this. I'm okay. telling this from okay. the point of view I will of you. Give this. Yeah, I will give like, my perspective. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, on the 21st birthday, yeah, we drove up uh, on the day of your birthday. We went and did some fun stuff around uh, Fort Wayne, mm. uh, and then uh, by the way, if you ever go to Fort Wayne, it's actually a pretty lit place. Yep, at least Town. it was t ten years ago. Yeah, <laughs> don't don't know now, but yeah, it, yeah, it, it was a pretty good place. 
Uh, went up, did some fun stuff on your birthday that night. You were like, I want to go play pool and drink. So we went to a pool hall yeah. uh, and started with some pitchers. And I remember you killed two pitchers by yourself there. Yeah. Um, I did not. I was drinking mildly because uh, I am exactly two years old, uh, two years, two months older than him. So I was already 21. Um, <clears throat> I was drinking mildly just to make sure you were taken care of. Uh, but you and our buddy John were going fucking ham. Yeah. Uh, we finished the pool hall, and you're like, well, I'm not done drinking. So we go. They, they, they were like, oh, this is a pretty dope spot over here. It's probably going to be packed, but we can probably might find a table. We got in there and thankfully found a table. Uh, and the lady, the lovely sweetheart, if you're out there, you're awesome. The lovely sweetheart of a waitress came over. And you immediately were just like, uh, um, to which the rest of the night proceeded as you thinking you were getting free drinks, which you didn't realize was I had paid for a couple of them. Uh, and then she was sticking you with the bill and all the ones she was bringing you because she was asking you like, Hey, what drink do you want? Awesome. And she would bring it to you and you're like, sweet free alcohol. And she's like, "Uh uh-huh. And like walked away and I'm like, (laughs) This isn't going. Then the best part of the night was when you you looked at us and you were like, she definitely wants me. And we were like, sure, bro. <laughs> probably not. But, hey, it's it's whatever. And you were like, nah, she definitely wants me. And then you, uh, I remember you asked her out. And that's when she said, Honey, I appreciate that thought, but my boyfriend's sitting right there. And he yeah. was, to give perspective, Sam's here, John's here, John's wife is here, I'm here, boyfriend is here. There's no, nothing blocking us between him and us. And old boy, I remember seeing him, he didn't even get mad. Old boy just went, ha, <laughs> And looked over and I just went, <laughs> just set the drink down. Yep. And um, then after that, you you were like, well, it's time to leave. I guess I got to go. I made things awkward. We pay our tabs. And I remember telling you, do not go anywhere. Do not run. Do not leave. Do not walk. I will go with you. I walk up. I pay. I turn around. You have disappeared. Yep. I go outside <laughs> and you are standing at the corner. Now, I just I just want y'all to know this is what I saw walking out the door. He's like <laughs> <laughs> ready to go. And I immediately went, "Oh no." And he goes, "You can't catch me." <sighs> I then proceeded to have to run clear across the parking lot to catch you. And by catch you, I had to tackle him into a car. Well, I don't remember. So I do remember this little bit that I thought we were racing to the car. And uh, we race, and I stop at a car that wasn't ours. <laughs> yeah. And I was and, like, I would. <laughs> but when that, I tackled that, I him, in my head. I remember wrapping my arms around him, grabbing him, and he was like, ah, and I just went, we're leaving. <laughs> and. I like grab your arm and just like start dragging you to the car. Come to find out John did the same thing <laughs> and his wife is chasing him down. <laughs> and thus we get in the car and then we get back to the apartment and you went, I'm going to use the bathroom. Do, 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 do. <laughs> and that was, and I you lived in the bathroom. You slept yep. in the bathroom and until the next morning when we got up and you were just like, like you actually woke up in there showered and you were hung over for the entire drive home. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was not fun at all. No. You, however, so see, we had a, a good few hours for mine. <laughs> um, <laughs> Joe here made it all of 45 minutes into his 21st birthday, 20 minutes before I blacked out 20 minutes. All right. So you were upright for 45 minutes. I sh- well, not quite upright for 40. You're yeah. upright for about 30 minutes. Yeah. And then in various states of wow. Um, and yeah. that is all. Thanks. So peach vodka or peach Ciroc, right? It was peach Smirnoff vodka. That's it. Yeah. Which I can no longer drink peach alcohol because the flavor brings back the memories of pain. Yep. 
Um, because we had waited till midnight. Yes. So night, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I remember, yep. and then you fill in everything after okay. that. Uh, you and I, we found out. I don't know if this is a state thing, but I remember in our state in Virginia, where we were, were from, mm. um, you can buy alcohol the day before your twenty first birthday. Yeah. And so you were like, "Hey, since you can go in and buy it, I'll buy it for you yeah. as a gift." But you get to choose the flavors and you chose peach and green apple for some God awful reason. I did. Yes. Oh, okay. I don't remember that. I remember that vividly. Cause yeah. I was just like, why? <laughs> like, so I go in, I grab both bottles, show them my ID. Everything's fine. Boom. We go to the house. All of our friends were showing up. Cause we were a bunch of night owls at the time. We would yeah. party until like five, six in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, Oh, all our friends showed up around 1130 ish. And then it, you know, as soon as the clock struck midnight, it was game time. Yeah. I remember when the clock struck midnight, I took a shot. Everyone, uh, like a couple of people took a shot with us. Some people cracked open some beers. Uh, we had a big old ping pong table that we were playing shot pong on, which I somehow, the more I drank shots, the better I got, I was crushing it for about 15 minutes. Yep. (laughs) And, and I went downhill very fast. I, yeah, I remember. Then, then I remember this. I remember that at the end of the very first game of shot pong, everyone walked outside to smoke, and I'm standing there at the table, and I'm looking at this bottle of peach vodka, and there was about that much left in the bottle, and it was a big bottle too. Was- yeah, and I was like, "Fuck it," <laughs> and I just went. Hey! And y'all kind of like shuffled for a second. I went, hey! and finally you open the door and you're like, why? And I was like, fuck it. Doop. Glug, 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 glug. And I remember hearing everyone go, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And I just killed the bottle, slammed it down, and then stood upright and stared at y'all. And I distinctly remember the last thing I heard as I locked up was timber <laughs> because I just boom and I hit the ground and I was out. That's where the lights went out for me. But apparently I was active for another 25 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So now at this point you would get back up. Well, we help you back up and um, your fiance at the time was there. Yes. Um, and you decided to de- declare to the world how much you loved her. Yep. And that you were pointing to the ring this? And I have photos of you doing that too. <laughs> um, and then, so we're trying to like take photos before you totally black out. So try to remember the night. And so it's myself, Dexter. I'd you. like to put one detail into this before you continue. Uh-huh. This, my 21st birthday, this particular midnight that we're at was the oh. midnight leading into Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I yeah. was supposed to be places the next day. Yep. Continue. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, we're trying to take photos and I, there's a photo, uh, it's, I think it's me, you and Dexter and, uh, and you just ripped the worst fart I had ever smelled in my life. And so there's a photo of me and Dexter, like frantically trying to put, cover our noses and you just had the biggest shit eating grin on you, <laughs> but it was like a drunk shit eating grin too. It's just like a, <laughs> yep. and, um, so yeah, it's basically a lot of that. You tried to play a beer pong a little bit more. Uh, wasn't going well. And then you said, I need to go to the bathroom. And we were like, oh, here it comes. Because <laughs> this is alcohol poisoning levels. So, <laughs> yeah. so we get to the bathroom. You start doing your thing. You're like, all right, he'll be fine. He's puking it up. Don't have to go to the hospital tonight. That's always a good thing. And then so you stop puking. And then you decide, I'm hungry. <laughs> and you want food. And so you get up. And go to the fridge and get some fucking peppermint cookie dough <laughs> and just, like the like the fucking Pillsbury tube of it. Go back to the bathroom because you apparently weren't done puking too. You'd also grab the, uh, some Doritos, I think, and then just you go and start and make a little camp for yourself, basically in the bathroom <laughs> where you're like puking and then taking a bite of the peppermint cookie dough yep. and then uh, some chips and then puking it all up and then doing the same thing. After a while, you end up in the shower at one point. Um, 
and you you pass out. You're totally just dead of the world. Um, and so then Dexter and I were like, we should get him into the bed and then just let him sleep this all off because he's got a busy day tomorrow. <laughs> Granted, at this point, it is about 1245 when he finally like fully passes out. Yep. So he we made haven't it, even made it an hour yeah, yet. It was 45 minutes in. Uh, just to give you the level of alcohol poisoning he was at. So now this is when you were probably your heaviest as well. Yes. So it took myself and Dexter, and then I think somebody else had to help as well. But it was primarily us two to do everything in our power to get you from the – so our uh, – our apartment was like a, a long hallway, and then there was on the right was the bathroom, on the left was my bedroom, and on the very back was his bedroom. Yeah. We had to get him from the bathroom to the bedroom, which wasn't super far, probably was, 10, uh, uh, 10 from, feet. From that door to my bed, I would say was probably no more than 10, 15 feet tops. Yeah. But you were almost, what, 400 pounds? And, I was, yeah. I was, yeah, no, I was probably definitely 400 pounds yeah. and incoherent, like dead and weight. Total dead weight. So, yeah. yeah, it took everything in us to get it you there and then we fucking finally get you to flop <coughs> on the bed and then fiance kind of takes care of you from there but we left you with plenty of trash bags in a, in a trash can i remember dexter telling me that he had to yeah. like like suplex me Based, onto oh, bed. yeah onto the bed like because yeah. he he <laughs> so i remember dexter telling me i think it was the next day or a couple days later that he like he stood me like my body up balanced me enough to where he got behind me wrapped his arms around me and then just yeah. And, yeah. But the problem was I landed on top of him, and yep. he was like, oh, oh. <laughs> so and so, I, I had to grab you, lift you up enough for him to get out. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah so that was uh, not fun. And then, yeah, then you basically proceeded to basically sleep through the night um, until – I'll let you take over from there. <laughs> I, re I remember waking up. Uh, so the next day I was supposed to go to my folks' place for Thanksgiving lunch because like, they had dinner super early. We are supposed to be there at 1. I remember waking up to my phone being completely detonated full of notifications and hearing our front door just yeah. like this. And I'm like, what? what? Why am I hearing? What's going on? And so I like I get up. And I see my phone ringing again. It's my fiance at the time. And I was like, hello. And she's like, wake up. And I'm like, what's going on? And she's like, you're late. And I was like, okay, I'll, what? And she's like, open the door. So I get up and I stumble to the front door, open the door. She comes in fully dressed to the nines, ready for this thing. Cause I was supposed to get, we were going to my folks and then we were going to her folks. Yeah. <clears throat> and so I'm supposed to be like, dressing up for this event and i am still drunk <laughs> like severely yeah. drunk and uh she's like what are you doing and i'm like i'm just sleeping and <laughs> she goes do you realize what time it is i said yeah it's like 9 a.m and she goes it's 1 30 in the afternoon we were supposed to be at your folks 30 minutes ago and i went oh no <laughs> <laughs> and so i remember she's like you need a shower you need to get ready go get in the shower i fall asleep in the shower she doesn't realize this until it's two o'clock <laughs> and at this point she's like she, i remember her open the door and i hear wake up <laughs> so i get up i shower she has picked out an outfit for me thank god I get dressed, and as we're on the way there, I remember having sunglasses on that weren't even mine. They were her, like, <laughs> big frame girly sunglasses. Yeah. So I'm looking like a just prima donna, <laughs> hair kind of fixed, and I'm just, like, laid in the seat just, uh, and I remember putting the window down so the air is just blowing on me. I'm like, <sighs> and uh, she, I remember her, she, in, you know, bless her heart, she, uh, she made the judgment call, and she goes, you're not. You're not going with me to my folks' house. No. Mind you, her folks hated me. Like, they already They're, thought I was a bad person to be with. They weren't big fans. Yeah, yeah, and so that would have given them more reason to be like, yeah, no. Yeah. She's like, you're not going with me. And I ended up going to my folks' house, to which uh, my stepdad proceeded to uh, pour a whiskey sour and stick it under my nose and then watch me immediately <laughs> run to the bathroom and vomit. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh. Not a fun... Not a fun 21st. We say those stories to say this. Yeah. Uh, I don't, and I, I have a different judgment on this. I used to be the kind of person where I'm like, oh, you got to get obliterated on your 21st. It's yeah. a rite of passage. 
Don't. You don't. No. You really don't. Alcohol is not all it's cracked up to be. Mm-hmm. Have a couple drinks, sure. If you don't feel comfortable going to the bar, there's nothing wrong with you going and buying a couple of drinks from the gas station and going and watching your favorite shows. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's three free drinks, so, you know, just try to keep it light, you know. Yeah. There's the the classic of don't mix, you know. Yeah. So just stick to one type of alcohol. What would your three free drinks be? Ooh. I, You're 21. Yeah, when I was 21, um, probably Red Bull Vodka. <laughs> I was going to say the same yeah. thing. Hey, <clears throat> and I think that... A secret that a lot of people don't know. I know that we're going to sound like alcoholics saying this, but that's okay. A secret that a lot of people don't know, especially if you go to the club, always go vodka Red Bull. Here's why. Even if you don't have energy drinks or you don't typically drink them, Mm. the amount of Red Bull you're getting is not even remotely close to going over the caffeine limit you should be having because you're not getting a whole can of Red Bull. You're getting like that much. Yeah. But typically, your your glass is going to be no bigger than this. So it's mm. almost like a 50-50 mix or a 60-40, depending on where you go. Some people do less vodka. If you're going trash vodka, you know, it depends on what the, the taste. But I prefer to go for a more high-falutin vodka yeah. because I know that, one, I'm, I'm not only going to be drinking like two or three of them, and I'd rather have a better flavor. I don't want to taste lead. I don't want to taste like a trash can. I, yeah. I want to I want to actually have a good drink. <clears throat> but vodka Red Bulls are a great choice because it's going to keep you alert throughout the night. I would also say if you can, just to avoid the hangover the next day, if you can get the sugar-free Red Bull, that's going to be the main thing because sh- yes. th- it's not the alcohol, it's the sugar. And so, like, if you can get something that's very low sugar, you won't feel too bad the next yeah. day. But inevitably, especially on your 21st, you're going to have a little bit of a hangover. But, yeah, no, go out. I mean, I think, uh, I think, I think the so. main thing that they're nervous for is they don't want to be <clears throat> super sloppy just for, like, basically some coworkers. Yeah. You know, so like just limit yourself to the three and stop there. Yeah. You know, so that's the biggest thing is just like and it's hard to do when you're inebriated. Oh, absolutely. Stick to your three. You know, that's absolutely that's kind of my number to where I'm like, okay, I'm good. You know? Yeah. And then like I don't do any more after that. If I want to get shit faced, I'll go beyond that. But you know, yeah. it, it's it's rare that that's a thing. Yeah, I I see it, and I mean, like, mind you, I turned thirty two in what two months, yeah. And I, I like at my age, I don't drink, yeah, really ever. Mm-hmm. I think I think the last time I had a beer was probably I had a beer when our buddy Gary moved away at lunch, but even then, I think I don't I don't remember the last time I drank. Yeah, to be honest with you, but in my twenties. You and I were power drinkers. Like, yeah. like we would go to parties and people would want to try and keep up with us. Like, mm-hmm. we we were those guys where we could throw back. And not not saying that that was a good thing. <laughs> no, it took me a long time to like whiskey again. Yeah, because of that. Yeah, <laughs> and and like and same for me with tequila. Yeah. You know, when going back to the apartment that we were talking about, like that same apartment when we first got it, a friend of ours brought over a bottle of Jose, and I drank almost the entire bottle. Couldn't touch tequila for forever yeah and now tequila is probably the only liquor that i actually enjoy mm-hmm. so like you know it comes full circle but i would say if it's your 21st birthday you're, you're gonna be nervous but here's the best part about the nervousness is your gut will always tell you if it's a good nervous or a bad nervous yeah if it's a good kind of nervous go yeah because you're you because you are going to have what could p- potentially be the time of your life and especially with like because they're saying like you know i only have one other friend and they're going to be out working um then yeah make some new friends you know yep Coworker friends. I mean, my I met my wife at work. You know, so like, <laughs> that's. An, I don't want to. I, I, I'm not going to say. We're it. We're not getting into <laughs> that. <laughs> Anyways, you are I'm, correct. I yes. met my wife at work. So, yes, yes, and yes. and a lot of really good friends there. So. Yes, and I, yeah. I I will go on record and say right now she is a very sweet lady. Yeah. She understands why I'm staring at the camera. Anyways. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. I think you make some new friends. Yeah. I think, and even if you don't make some new friends, you're going to have a memory. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's something where you're going to go out and you might have the, you might have the best time of your life. If your gut's telling you no in a bad way, get out of there. Don't go. Yeah. You know, like absolutely. But if you're, if you're nervous, like excited, nervous, like butterflies almost absolutely go have the time of your life. Oh yeah. It's 21st birthday. I, as much as I hate the story of my 21st birthday, I love telling it because it's funny as hell. <laughs> And oh, same. Yeah. like I said, I have that, that same mentality of like, look, you don't have to get sloshed. Mm-mm. But if you do, it'll be a funny story. It will be. <laughs> yeah. It will be a very funny Usually. story. Yeah. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, no, I think that's a, that's a great one to end on. And I think that's a, a, a great uh, telling for any, any other listeners out there that we have. 
who uh, are young and trying to understand what that looks like. You know, you don't have to drink to have a great time. Um, you know, it is it is it not, especially in today's day and age, it's not a rite of passage. It's not a situation in, in that you that you you should ever feel like you have to be in. Uh, and you know, trust your gut. Yep. So, I think that's a but yep. a great one to leave on. Oh yeah, I mean, twenty first birthdays are. Our- are, they're they're just fun. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, of course, like we said earlier, make sure to like and subscribe and follow on any listening sites or YouTube. Of course, if you're watching there, leave a comment. Or if you're listening to us on any sites, we always have a question posing. Like, it, is there anything you would add to this uh, episode that a topic that you want us to talk about or something of the sorts? By all means, answer those in the comments on the YouTube side. Drop it down below. Let us know what you think. Let us know. Is, is there a, is there some advice you'd like us to give? Again, you can join the Discord as well. Mm-hmm. And drop it in there in our entire Lousy Show section. Uh, we have a forum specifically for that. So by all means, jump in there and have some fun with it. Uh, how's that? I think that's it. I believe so. Yeah, there's a button yeah. behind me. Go mm-hmm. click it. Click it right now. And then that video right there is something YouTube thinks you're going to like. So Maybe don't click that one. That's up to you. Yeah. Later. Yeah. Bye.